Hello Home Slices, it's Kier with Home Slice Adulting coming to you with a full review for Family or Fiance Season 1 Episode 4 titled Amber and Justin, Huge Little Lies. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes of this episode, I want to say thank you for clicking on this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anyone who you think will enjoy it. Now, if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the previous episode, you'll have to check out my Instagram page. Now, just for your information, my Instagram is public, and that means that you don't have to have your own Instagram account to view my post on Instagram. So check out the links below in the description box so that you can access my Instagram page and also my Twitter. I think my Twitter is public, um, not 100% sure, but anything that I share on Instagram goes to Twitter anyway. So be sure that you follow me on social media as well. Now, initially, since I was doing full reviews for Iyala Fix My Life, and because I don't want to overload myself, um, especially considering how I am in school and working full time, um, I decided that I would do full reviews for Iyala and then do mini reviews for a uh, family or fiance on Instagram. But it turns out that the previous episode of Iyala featuring Leandria Johnson was actually the mid season finale. So we won't have Iyala for. Um, maybe a couple months. So while I'm waiting for Iyanla to come back on, I guess I could trade Iyanla to do full reviews of Family or Fiance, which is turning out to be quite the show. So let's jump right in because I have a lot to say about Amber and Justin. I took a whole bunch of notes and I'm probably just going to read them verbatim because when I get off track, these videos get super long. So the first thing I like to do when I review shows is talk about who's who. Um, and so we have the soon-to-be bride, Amber, and the groom, Justin. They've been together for eight years. They met at a bar. And right away, he comes off as somebody who is immature, but whatever. So we have the three people on the bride side of the family. Uh, we have Rosalind, who is Amber's mom, who looks very young. When they said that Rosalind had been married for 30 years before um, her husband passed away, I was like, 30 years? She looks, she looks very young to me, and she looks very good. But moving on, we have um, Brittany. Brittany is Amber's sister. We have Anthony, who is a minister and also is Amber's brother. Um, Amber's brother spoke a word when he said that Amber has too big a heart and that causes her to fall into the, the opposites attract category and that she just gives anybody a chance. And I can identify with that because I feel like I was that way in the past. But let's move on. We don't want to get into my personal life. <laughs> but um Apparently, the bride's family thinks that Justin is too much of a jokester and doesn't really take anything seriously. And, you know, he might not be husband material. Now, moving on, we see we have the groom's family. Um, Leanne is Justin's aunt. Um, Cortland is Justin's brother. And Erica is Justin's younger sister. And right away, Erica tells us that she knows a secret about Justin. And um, it comes out pretty soon. But moving on... Um, Justin thinks that his family's main concern is that they don't really know Amber and that um, the fact that she's a city girl versus a country girl. And I feel like his analysis of why his family may not be on board with this marriage is um, very surface level. Um, who cares if, you know, she's more of a city girl and you're a country boy? Who cares? That's not a real analysis of like why a marriage won't work. There's plenty of people who are complete opposites that have marriages that work quite well. Um, it just comes off to me that he does, does not have the, um, higher level thinking <laughs> that it requires to actually analyze, you know, the real reasons why maybe his marriage, uh, could be in danger. Um, so yeah, right away, I'm not a big fan of Justin. Just keep it. Sorry about that, y'all. I keep forgetting to silence my phone when I do these uh, reviews. It shouldn't interrupt us anymore. But moving on, we have um, 
the couple, Amber and Justin, are going to talk with Tracy McMillan, who is the relationship expert slash therapist. Apparently, they have, you know, been together for eight years, engaged for a year. This is the first time their families are meeting. And real quick, I'm going to go on a little personal tangent. Um, my boyfriend and I have been together for quite a while. It's been more than four years now. and We have been talking about marriage. And that's one of my biggest concerns is like our families not meeting each other prior to the wedding. Um... And I feel like that's like a really difficult thing to resolve. I mean, like we can have an engagement party, but the the problem is, is that like our families are from different places. And so I have family primarily in Texas and Alabama. I'm sorry, Texas and Georgia. My boyfriend has family in Texas and Alabama and, um, we met in Louisiana, so a lot of our friends are from Louisiana. So it's all, you know, kind of in the South, but um, bringing all those different people together um, in one place to meet prior to the wedding, you know, there's money involved. There's always been a concern that I have, like just bringing two groups of people together who don't really know each other and uh, essentially marrying into other people's families without knowing them is like a big concern to me. So, um, I've been, I've been trying to figure out a way to maybe have my family meet his before the wedding get like, are we going to have a big engagement party? And then, um, you know, have everybody pay to come to this engagement party and then have everybody pay again, you know, a year or a year and a half later to come to the wedding. It's just, it's a lot of logistics and, um, it's just something that, you know, I seriously need to consider because God forbid our family get together and something like this happens. OK, um, what like what happened on the episode today? But enough about my life. Let's get back to this episode. So apparently Amber grew up seeing a strong marriage. Again, her parents were married for 30 years before her dad passed away. <sighs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, and Justin's attitude is more like, I'm going to put a ring on her finger so nobody else can have her. So again, immature. Um, so right away, I just feel like they are unequally yoked. Um, not just, you know, her being a city girl and him being a country boy. It's like, like really their backgrounds don't, um, fit well together. Um, their attitudes don't fit well together. Their levels of maturity don't fit well together. And it's obvious, and he admits basically that he is using this engagement as a way to manipulate Amber. Um, she can't talk when the game is on or he delays the marriage. How do, why, how, why do you hold marriage over somebody's head like that? To me, that's saying that you don't really want to get married. The purpose of us getting married is so that you can control things and that you can hold this over my head. And I, Mm -mm. I don't like that. Um, anyways, um, he's using the engagement to get what he wants from Amber and that's manipulation. Why would you want to be married to somebody who clearly is manipulating you? Um, so we can't put it all on Justin. There's a part that Amber has to play in staying with somebody who would treat her that way. Now, moving on, we see that, um, you know, of course, Tracy gives both of them their assignments for, you know, their time in the house. And um, Tracy is going to have Justin create a five-year plan and discuss it with Amber's family. And then Amber has to do the 20 questions game with Justin's family. So Amber's family arise, arrives and right away, things are awkward. Um, apparently, Amber doesn't really talk about Justin, which is always a red flag. If, if somebody that you're close with doesn't tell you about a major event or change in their life, there's something wrong. Um, and then... Uh, Amber's sister feels like um, Justin is childish and flirtatious. And so um, they're eager to meet Justin's family. Uh, they seem to still be feeling the effects of the loss of their dad. And their conversation seems kind of awkward. And I'm wondering if it was because Justin is in the room. Um, Anthony, Amber's brother, is trying to talk to Amber and she's kind of ignoring him. And Amber's siblings apparently received the news of her engagement via secondary sources, which means that Amber didn't tell them herself. Um, it's all again, it's always a red flag flag when your family, who you're normally close to, does not receive important news about your life. Clearly something's not right. Anthony seems really hurt by that and so Anthony you know mentions that he's a manager man, minister and that adds another layer of complexity because 
Um, those of us who have grown up in religious households know that when you make decisions in your life that um, don't really align with your religious upbringing, it can cause tension in the family. And so Amber later on tells us that she doesn't talk to her family a lot about some of the things that go on in her relationship with Justin because she knows that their religious background is it's going to be an issue um so I definitely get that but it's it's not healthy in Amber's case as we learn um later on uh Anthony's concerned because apparently Amber has a type which is a troublemaker. So Amber changes the topic quickly and she offers an explanation that, you know, she's been living with Justin for a long time. So duh, it's serious. Um, and to me, I don't buy it. Um, I think maybe she's a little embarrassed about her relationship with Justin. Um, Anthony thinks that Justin is just making pancakes like everything is normal. I think it's refreshing to see a man cooking. I think I thought that was, you know, the one good thing about Justin. But, um, um, Amber's brother thinks that Justin's presence in Amber's life is making her change her personality. So Justin's family arrives and it's family meeting time. So it's time for everybody to lay out their issues on the table. And so uh, we're going to go one by one with the family members. So we have Cortland, who is Justin's brother. He thinks that they fight over little things that, you know, they shouldn't be fighting over. And Cortland knows something and he's hoping that they confess it and that he doesn't have to tell it. So immediately I'm like, uh oh. So next we have Brittany. Brittany is Amber's sister. She thinks that Justin is too much of a joker, jokester and that he's not marriage material. She also brings up that Amber didn't mention their engagement to her. And then she says a word which um, resonated with me. And she says, I want y'all to be happy and not just comfortable because y'all have been together for so long. And I'm like, mm, ain't that a word? There's too many people out here who are getting married because they are comfortable and not because they are in a healthy, happy relationship. So... I felt that. Moving on, we have Anthony, who is Amber's brother. He feels like he doesn't know Justin enough to bless their union. And he thinks that as the man of the family, Justin should have come to him and asked for Amber's hand. And while I think that would have been a very nice gesture of good faith, um, and, you know, building a bond with his soon-to-be brother-in-law, I don't necessarily think it was necessary um it's like a, a kind of antiquated tradition that is more you know done out of good faith than anything else previously it had other purposes but anyways um Rosalind, who is Amber's mom, feels like Justin has disregarded her as Amber's mother and she doesn't feel like Justin is taking things seriously. And in Justin's joking fashion, he apologizes and then jokes that the apology basically magically fixes everything. Erica, who is Justin's sister, doesn't think that Justin is faithful and he calls her a snitch. And Erica basically says that she was introduced to another girl. And I'm like, go ahead and put it all on the table, okay? Amber's reaction is weird. Um, it comes off as like hurt, but like this muted kind of hurt. Um, it becomes apparent that Amber has this type of uh, su suppressed emotion. If I found out in front of my family, you know, if it was truly a shock to me to basically find out that my fiance was cheating on me, I would have definitely had a bigger outburst of emotion than Amber did. And um, it's coming off as if she is used to suppressing her emotions, at least around Justin. So um, we'll talk about that later. Um, and then Justin tries to deflect things and tries to address some of Amber's flaws. And then my, my favorite person on the show, um, at this point, Leanne, who is Justin's aunt, says that, um, she, res basically she respectfully set Amber's family straight by telling them that their family history is riddled with absent fathers. And so there's certain standards that she can't hold Justin to because those are things that he wasn't taught. But when it comes to being faithful, it is something that they were taught and so she can't give them a blessing based on the things that she just heard so if i'm correct this is the very first episode of uh family or fiance where nobody gave their blessing the first time around now amber says that she's shocked at the cheating allegations but again i don't know if i buy that and based on what we hear from Cortland later on i don't think she was shocked either um 
Next, they share what their tasks are, but when Justin says his, he kind of makes it seem like that they were all going to come up with a five-year plan, um, but whatever. Next, we see that Amber wants to talk privately with Justin because she is upset, and uh, Justin comes up with this stupid, stupid excuse um, when Amber asks about the girl that his sister mentioned. He says that the girl is into sports and gives him pointers. Is that, is that what they're calling them these days? Pointers? <laughs> I mean, come on. It's clearly a lie. He's fidgeting. He has all the telltale signs of somebody who's not being honest. And Amber is not getting angry enough. That tells you something about their relationship. That uh, this is probably not new. And that there is dysfunction. There is this cognitive dissonance between like what she's supposed to be doing. In reacting to news like this and what she's actually doing. But um, anyways, he says that he told this other woman that he can't see her anymore. And Amber's like, oh, so you were seeing her? And he was like, oh, no, not like that. Um, and then he just glazes over it and says, all is forgiven. And it's like, nope, we can't move past this. This just happened like 10 minutes ago. I just found this out. There's no way that all can be forgiven when I don't even have all of the details. So next, Justin goes to talk with his family and immediately tells them the truth straight out. I cheated. And it's like, okay, why can't you tell that to Amber? Why can't you just be 100% honest with Amber the way you were with your family? He's just so immature and I'm like, it's, it's yucky. I'm like disgusted by it. But um, clearly he's not ready to get married. And Leanne is not happy and says that he wasn't raised like that. And so next we see Amber talk with her mom. Amber says that she feels like Justin's apology about it was not real. Um, Amber is hurt by it, but it's like glazing over it and has this like distant aloofness about it. Um, and apparently she has a history with cheaters. So next we see the families get um, have their, you know, do their own separate task and so we have justin with amber's family talking about his five-year plan and at the same time we have amber sitting down with justin's family do, playing the 20 questions game and so you know these are going on at the same time the cameras are going back and forth but i'm just going to talk about them one by one so with the five-year plan they bring up different topics and try to figure out what um justin thinks about these what are his plans for these in the next five years so they talk about children his plan was not a plan at all it came off as very go with the flow um he when it came to children he just wants some and thinks that he should be a good father and rosalind says well if you're cheating and bringing that drama into your marriage your children are going to be impacted by that he doesn't seem to take that seriously next they talk about finances justin doesn't have a plan besides i make good money now um and he doesn't believe in having a plan b and makes a, a crass joke about condoms they talk about monogamy he avoids the question when monogamy is the biggest issue when it comes to marriages if you have a traditional marriage and the understanding is that you're supposed to be faithful to one person and one person only. Um, if you're not monogamous, that destroys the whole argument for why you should get married in the first place. If you can't like follow the, the one standard that marriage is about. Do you, you see what I'm saying? So um, anyways, he downplays the fact that he's cheated in the past. And um, Anthony speaks on how all of a sudden he's just now hearing about the engagement. And he asks if Justin has ever put his hands on Amber and he says no. You can tell he's not really taking this seriously and um, there is no five-year plan essentially. He mentioned something about he would never put his hands on Amber because she needs her face to make money. And that was a very crash joke. His family didn't like it. Even he recognized that it was a crash joke. And is Amber a model? Um, oh, I, she must be. I don't know. Moving on, we have... Justin's family and Amber's having this 20 questions thing. Um, and 
the aunt says that Justin just wants somebody who won't give up with him on him and that he has lived his life with people who have let him down and he just needs somebody to be there. And it's like, okay, so you get to treat me the way you want to treat me and I stick around. And that's the definition of me not giving up on you. That, that sounds about right. Now, Amber is hesitant about marrying Justin and gave a lot of butts when they asked her, you know, why she wants to marry Justin. And to me, that's like a clear indication that first they shouldn't be engaged at all or they should definitely hold off on the marriage but to me they shouldn't be together at all if you have this many doubts but moving on um her biggest concern is him being faithful and again that's like the basis of marriage if that's your only concern that's like the concern and you know to me it tells you that like hey you shouldn't you shouldn't get married at all like at the very least you should feel that somebody is going to be faithful to you and if you don't like then we don't need to get married right I don't, whatever moving on just I'm, I feel like as a person who knows that my relationship is about fidelity and who you know has a, a the largest amount of faith that the person that I'm with is not interested in cheating on me um I find it very hard to understand people who allow themselves to be cheated on yeah it's very hard for me to identify with that so um Leanne brings up that Amber's arm was broken and asks how it happened so apparently Leanne already has suspicions that Justin had something to do with it then Amber comes up with this abused woman excuse if I've ever heard one and claims that she was mopping while she was in heels who would mop in heels I'm very clumsy I would never wear heels and mop at the same time I don't know why she would do that that don't make that don't make no sense it sounds like a lie and it's like don't insult my intelligence by telling me that lie so um at that point, I'm like, okay, so in addition to him not taking things seriously, in addition to him not being 100% respectful, respectful of your family, in addition to him being a cheater, there's domestic abuse on top of it to the point where you broke a bone. How many more red flags do you need? I I just can't. And And now thinking back to the marriage um, where he uses the 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 marriage as manipulation to get her to do what he wants her to do it comes off that he's emotionally abusive as well and um i just can't and Cortland basically says that he knows that justin caused amber to break her arm <sighs> again red flag so moving on we anthony and amber talk um anthony says that Justin don't have a plan, that he doesn't have a strong opinion on monogamy. Amber claims that she's surprised that he didn't really have a plan because he tells her about her plans all the time. And Amber, again, says that she leaves things out because of their family dynamic and she's just really not being honest. So next, Amber and Justin talk and Amber thinks that he's not being nice to her family and he thinks that she should tell her family that she's happy. Again, manipulation. Now we have Anthony and Cortland talk. Um, and again, they are, uh, Anthony is Amber's brother and Cortland is Justin's brother. Cortland opened up like the Red Sea. He was just waiting on somebody to ask him a question because he just, he offered up that information immediately. He claims that Justin gave Amber an STD, that he had multiple phones, that he would leave for days at a time, that Amber has caught him on dating sites and cheating on her recently. And he even talks about the physical violence and that, um, Justin has been like holding Amber Amber down um, like physically holding her down um, and that Amber and Justin don't know that Cortland knows okay does Cortland live with them because the way he talks about it he says he'd be pretending to be asleep and it's like okay Cortland I don't know how old you are but it's not like you're listening to your mom and dad argue as an eight-year-old and it's like um I, you can see Anthony getting mad that Cortland did not step in to help defend Amber and while I can see that Cortland maybe felt like it wasn't his place to do that, I don't know that Cortland stepping in would do make any difference because when people are abused, 
they don't make rational or logical decisions and people go back and volunteer to be in abusive relationships um all the time and I don't know that Cortland intervening would have made a difference in Amber choosing to stay or to go um but moving on Anthony thinks that Cortland should bring it up, you know, the next day and that he'll have Cortland's back and that, you know, Amber and Justin weren't being honest. So the crap is about to hit the fan. So it's the next day. Cortland is ready for everything to be on the table. There's an impromptu family meeting that Anthony and Cortland call and they basically say it's time for us to stop focusing on this blessing and start focusing on whether y'all should get married, you know, all together, focusing on there being some type of intervention. And so, um, Amber is like very kind of evasive and is doing, um, saying that the issues that Justin and Amber's family have, have to do with what happened the previous day. And it's like, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about what's been going on in your relationship for eight years and they bring up the violence. And to me, it didn't. To me, they 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 skidded over the physical violence thing. Um, Anthony mentioned that there were 10 or 11 instances that Cortland brought up of them being physically violent with each other. And it's like, okay, um, where's the detail? It's, I feel like that's establishing that something is going on is one thing but it's gonna be hard to rebut that without like some hard facts so things just got got out of hand okay things just went haywire at some point and i had to rewind the show to figure out why everything went crazy so um erica who is Justin's sister, tells Anthony that he needs to tone it down, which I think was in response to Anthony saying that he would come after anybody who messed with his sister, Amber. Then Anthony gets louder, uh, which I don't think was an appropriate way to come back at Erica. But in the moment, nothing makes you more upset than when somebody tells you to calm down. So... Eventually, the whole room starts arguing and then Rosalind speaks up and everybody kind of quiets down and says everybody is old enough to control themselves when they are angry. And Amber just tells Justin to be honest. And then he violently like flicks his hand off of her and Justin is like fighting his brother Cortland. And Justin and Amber are not being real, not being real with themselves, not being real with anybody. And so now he's playing pool. Amber is asking him to be real. And again, Justin is not the only person who needs to be real. Amber has been hiding the reality of her relationship from her family for years now. And she needs to be real as well. So Tracy shows up and asks for some private time with Amber and Justin. Amber doesn't think that they've been real with each other. Justin doesn't think that he has been lying to himself or to Amber, even though he admitted that he cheated on her, which in essence is a lie. And Amber tells the truth for the first time and says that Justin is not healthy or right for her and that she thinks he's a good person, but that he hasn't been a good fiance to her. Amber kind of seemed to come to this realization, but then suddenly she and her family decide to stop filming and leave the house. Next thing you know, we see Corlin and Justin are in the car, I guess, heading to the airport so they can leave. Corlin and Justin are fighting because Cortland, you know, Cortland is saying, I know what I heard. I know what I saw. And Justin is saying, you know, I didn't put my hands on her. It's not true. I believe Cortland personally because he knows details um, about these things but moving on here's the kicker though Amber and Justin are still engaged and are still planning on getting married are you serious if that's again if that's not a sign of an abusive relationship I don't know what is it's it's baffling to me and it's not, I don't want to come off as if I'm judging Amber because it, it reminds me or it puts me in the mind of like the women who were with R. Kelly and women who have um, 
experienced abuse and continuously go back to the person that has abused them. And I can't remember what the number was. It's like you go back maybe seven times before like it really clicks. I don't know. I'm, I don't remember the number, but the point is what the heck? <laughs> so it looks like even with all the red flags that were brought up, even with the, um, fact that it is out there that Justin has been abusive and that Amber has been abusive as well because Cortland mentioned that Amber was hitting Justin too. Um, the fact that he is emotionally manipulative, you know, that came from his own mouth and they're still getting married. Now this is why the divorce rate is so high. People come down on marriage so hard as if marriage is the reason why people are getting divorced. The reason why people get divorced is because they don't prepare themselves really for what marriage is. And like Iyala said on that episode, people prepare themselves for the wedding. They don't prepare themselves for building a life together. And that's why divorce rates are so high is because the pre-work that's supposed to be done before you get to the point where you get married is not not done and if you would have done some of the pre-work you wouldn't end up in a relationship that you're not supposed to be in and waste your time and waste your resources and go through the process of splitting up you know the property and sp splitting up the kids and you know splitting up uh the relationship people blame the the institution of marriage and it's like marriage can be a beautiful thing but people abuse marriage and that's why i don't watch shows like 90 day fiance because to me marriage is something that's very serious and uh, stuff like 90 day fiance makes people think that marriage is a sham or that marriage is something to be played with what do you know about somebody in 90 days that you can get married to them why do people play with marriage like it's like it's a game? It's not a game. It's your life. So um, that's what I have to say about it. Okay. Um, tell me what you all thought about this episode. I know this review went really long, but I had a lot to say. And then come to find out a second episode aired as well. I don't know that I want to invest the time in taking such detailed notes on this other episode of Family and Fiance um, because I haven't watched it yet. Um, I might do the review on Instagram. You all will just have to go on my page and check it out and see um, because it, it really kind of took a lot out of me to take all the notes, you know, pause when I had to type something. It takes a long time to make these videos. I mean, this video right now is already over 30 minutes. It took me probably about an hour and a half to get through the episode while I was taking notes. So that's two hours. Do I want to spend another two hours on another episode? Probably not. So I think I'm just not going to take notes and then um, do the review for this other episode of Iyala, not Iyala, on this other episode of family and fiance that aired yesterday um and posted on instagram so check out my instagram it'll be linked below in the comment section i mean link below in the description box thank you all so much for watching thank you to all my new subscribers thank you to all my old subscribers for hanging on peace out home slices